Hello, potion seller. I am going into battle, and I want your strongest potions. My potions are too strong for you, traveller. Potion seller, I tell you I'm going into battle, and I want only your strongest potions. You can't handle my potions. They're too strong for you. Potion seller, listen to me. I want only your strongest potions. My potions would kill you, traveller. You cannot handle my potions. Potion seller, enough of these games. I'm going into battle, and I need your strongest potions. Hi, everybody. So I've been playing with making some little uh, teeny tiny potion bottles, and uh, I'm going to show you some of my absolute best attempts at making these little potion bottles. So first off, I have a little piece of sticky tack that I've put down on a mini base. And I have a couple of other mini bases that are for some beads that I got. These are some uh, brown and green glass beads. And I just like those colors. I think they make nice looking bottles. Not very expensive. It's like $6 at Hobby Lobby. And then I've got some other little teeny tiny glass beads that are kind of like poppy seed size. Just watch out for those guys because they go everywhere. Um, and then I'm going to show you one that probably everybody has seen where you take a toothpick, you stick it in one end of a bead, take a pair of pliers and then snip off the end and you get a little cork in that guy, which is great. And then they, they look great and all. Um, but, uh, but we can do better than that. So first off, instead of sanding these guys to kind of get them down to the right shape, um, and then sticking them in a little uh, end of a bead. I think it's easier to just take a, an X-Acto knife like this one that has a, uh, a rounded edge, uh, a rounded blade on the edge and sort of roll it gently back and forth and score it until it comes off and don't put a lot of pressure. You don't want it to go flying off like that just kind of gently roll it back and forth and then that way you get a really nice looking little cork and then uh, I'm gonna stick that in a, a smaller bead or a bead with a smaller hole and that makes a nice looking little cork. And then I'm gonna shove it into the sticky tack so that I can keep track of it. It doesn't roll off somewhere. I'm also gonna paint these corks later, not with paint, but using a little bit of a wood stain to kind of give them more of a dark looking cork look. These little hobby Q-tips with their fine tips can also make nice looking little corks and they're easier to cut. And sorry, it looks like I lost the footage where I was painting these guys to kind of make them look like little corks, but I'm sure you know how to do that. Another method of making the little potion bottles that a lot of people have probably also seen is just gluing one of the little poppy, si poppy seed size beads to a larger bead. Um, but this is tedious. It's a little bit hard to do just using your fingers. So my first experiment with pinning these guys is going to be to take a little paper clip and then take a piece off of that and stick that in one side of the beads. And these paper clips are actually too thick to get through the whole um, little poppy seed size bead, which is fine. I just want to sort of glue it down and then reinforce that connection a little bit. It'll make it easier for me to glue it into the other side of the bead as well. So I have a uh, mold that I had made before a while ago of um, some little uh, glass bottles and things like that from, it came from a, a WizKids kit 
that um, was like a, I don't know, like a wizard's room, had some books and stuff, and then like little potion bottles. So I went ahead and I uh, cast those guys in silicone. Um, and I'll, I'll show the easiest way to do that later, but it, it just involves sort of gluing them down or, well, I use tape, I use packing tape. I put one side of them down in packing tape and then I plop them down into like a little blister pack um, uh, box and then I pour the silicone over those. But I have some little green kind of glass bottles that I was experimenting with. I had some Alumilite white resin and then I tried to mix in some color to that to get some sort of green green looking glass. Um, me and Alumilite have issues though. I, I, I do not recommend Alumilite resin, but I'm gonna go ahead and pin those guys and I'm just gonna take a little paper clip sized drill bit and a hand drill and then make a little hole into one side of them. Then I'm gonna go ahead and snip the little bead off of the, at the other end of the paper clip. And then I'm gonna glue that into there. Um, and these little molds, um, I thought that I was just gonna have a factory, like little uh, potion bottles for days and days and days, but it's been a little bit of a struggle getting those to work, like getting the resin to, to cure well into such a little teeny tiny space, like getting into the necks of the bottles and things like that, etc. So, but these, um, these came out looking pretty good. The thing with the molds too is that um, controlling the resin and getting it to form like a perfect little sort of um, bubble like on the end where it looks like the the butt of a um, of a, a piece of glass is almost impossible so you kind of need to like fix the um, the other side like the the other end of the glass um, but I did end up making some pretty deluxe looking bottles with these molds later. I just had to switch the type of resin I was using. But you can see that this method, you're, it's kind of like maximum effort for like minimal returns as far as um, the, the ease of just gluing together two little beads or cutting off the end of a um, of a, a toothpick and then shoving that into the other side of the bead as far as the like the, the look the results that you can get out of it but yeah I mean another option. But having messed with this for a while and you can kind of see the little pile of potions in the background, this is the easiest way that I've found to do these, um, these little corks. So I'll stick one end of the toothpick into the bead and then make sure that it's glued in there good. And then I'll just take a, an X-Acto knife and then kind of whittle it down until um, I'm happy with the shape on there. And, and then I'll um, disconnect it from the rest of the toothpick and then I'll, I'll shove the other end of the, the toothpick that I sharpened into a new bead. And the best way that I've found to do the potions by pinning them is to take a little push pin like this that can get through the little teeny tiny beads and then uh, stick that in so that the the little head of the pin still shows but so that you get through that bead and then glue that on and then stick that into the other end so so or what you could do is you could buy push pins that already have like a little sort of bead like attached at one end and then stick those into a, uh, a glass bead on the other side. 
and then cut off the excess. But save the rest of the pin because you can use that again. You can pin your models with it or you could use it to make more little glass bottles. And I personally think that these are my favorite little bottles. Like I think that they, you get the most benefit, sort of maximum return for minimal effort and for min-maxing, you know, like the cool kids do. Um, I think that these ones actually look the best. A couple of honorable mentions before we get on to the most deluxe, the most extra and pain in the ass potion bottles. Um, I chopped up some some of these little uh, Q-tips and then put some Q or, uh, yeah Q-tips and um, toothpicks in the end, and that looks okay as a potion bottle. Just any kind of little tube. The uh, pipette that I was using to try and force resin into my little bottle molds, um, it almost looked better than some of the little bottles that I made because they're uh, the little necks of the bottles, even using the pipette and forcing resin down into them, some of the, the little bottles, the necks of the bottles still didn't come out. So these almost look better in a way and then just stick a, um, a piece of toothpick in those for a cork. And now the most deluxe, the most extra potion bottles that I can possibly think of. We are going to use UV resin. And uh, so UV resin is cured by sunlight. Which is nice because what you can do is you can just uh, keep a bottle of it lying around like this and then put it into a mold, just like a little dropper bottle. And it's shelf stable. You can just leave it lying around in your studio. And the, the reason why it has this uh, black bottle is so that sunlight doesn't penetrate into it. Or if you have a resin 3D printer, uh, you could use the you could use the same resin. I don't know if they make a, a clear resin for 3D printers, but I know that they make a green that would make some really nice green glass looking bottles. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to sort of shove the resin down into the little necks of the bottles, and but you can see that this is actually curing. Like the the on the the last little bottle when I try and shove it down in there. Um, uh, I punch through a, a part that's actually already cured. And next I'm going to take um, a little droplets of ink. I'm going to use um, some Vallejo Game Ink. But I think that if you have alcohol ink, supposedly alcohol ink works better for this. It just mixes with the resin really well. But all I'm doing is just putting one little drop in the back of the push in the bottom of the potion bottle where that's the, the, the potion part um, and I kind of fat fingered these ones but uh, I started to get a technique down better later but I wanted some blue ones and I wanted some red ones and some green ones and uh, something that I learned about this that I thought was kind of fascinating is that uh, in the olden days um, the uh, the druggists and chemists would keep potion bottles, carboys, in in their windows of their shops to attract customers. And then if you had a big, really vibrant bottle of blue, or a really vibrant bottle of red and purple, and it was actually a sign of the chemist's ability to create uh, potent potions if they if they could create convincing bottles of of food coloring basically. People believe that humors uh, like blood and phlegm and bile that they were um, in charge of keeping the body's balance 
and these uh, these humors were represented in um, the druggist's windows, and this is in like the Victorian era. Medieval things that we think of like bloodletting by using leeches were actually kind of a luxury. If if you went to uh, to the the back alley druggist and asked them to do some bloodletting, they just cut you with a razor. But anyways, I just wanted some nice, vibrant, different colors of potions. Some nice red, some blue, some purple drink, you know? And now we just pop them in the sun to cure. And these are gonna take a little bit of cleanup, but it's really not bad. Um, the resin is, is much softer than plastic, and you can cut through it with scissors or just use your little uh, sprue cutters and then you can chop off the little pieces where you get some spillage. But the easiest way that I've found to put little um, tops on these little bottles is to use the base with some sticky tack on it and then put the bottle down in that and then grab a pen and grab one of the little poppy seed sized beads and use those two together as tools because they're just too small to really handle effectively on their own. <laughs> so using them together, it prevents fat, from, fat fingering and I know about fat fingering. And if you're interested in learning more about molding and casting using resin and plaster and things like that, I have multiple videos where I talk about that a lot and I actually cast up these guys, these little bottles, in another video. It was one of the very first videos that I did on my channel and it's in my modular dungeon tiles playlist. But that's it. Um, I guess it's up to you to decide whether or not if you got anything from this video, whether you liked any of these methods better than the other ones. Um, if, if you feel like it, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you liked or didn't like. Um, if you, how much time and effort you're interested in putting into things like this. Um, but uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves until the next time I see you. If you liked the video and you like my content, if you like my channel, consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing. It helps me to grow my channel. It lets YouTube know that you like content like this and that you enjoy things like this. Um, and that YouTube isn't just about people fighting in McDonald's over chicken nuggets and drama. Always look both ways when you're crossing the street.